What's up guys, Clouded Journey here, and this is going to be kind of a mixed bag haul. I got comics, I got a couple uh, retro video games, and I even have a wordy novelty book. So, lately I've uh, I sold a few things on eBay, and I had some credit on my PayPal account, which I've kind of been blowing. But uh, there was one, two lots I've bought uh, from, I think they were from thrift stores. Sometimes you'll find uh, thrift stores on eBay selling stuff and they tend to not label their comics very well so something like like this one was called a big box of Batman comics uh, and it had a whole bunch of random stuff in it so it doesn't actually have the specific issues so you have a lot less competition of people looking for specific things and if you know what you're looking for you can kind of see the cover see whatever and uh, make a bid on it so got a couple really good deals I got one lot of mixed com mixed Spider-Man comics, uh, and this one paid for the whole thing. This is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 529, and this is the first appearance of the Iron Spider armor that uh, Iron Man builds for Spider-Man, which uh, is a really sweet uh, suit of armor, and I didn't have it, so happy to get that. And this book can go for like $20, $30 sometimes, so nice high-grade book, uh, plus I got a bunch of extra bonuses, so that's also nice. So. Uh, to fill my some of the holes in my Spider-Man collection. This uh, 528, part of the other storyline. Uh, 527. And, oh, and then there's this uh, reprint of, I can't remember what issue it is, but the the sort of popular J. Scott Campbell cover. But yeah, I've been, I, re, I got a new phone, so I, I have my, uh, my list of all the Spider-Man books I've needed which I haven't updated in a long time, so I was able to update all that on my new phone and starting to work away a little bit more at my uh, Spider-Man run. Uh, I kind of took a break from Spidey for a while, but I've been sort of getting back into that, those, uh, looking for these books and these stories and reading Spidey stuff. So let's just do this a quick, uh, this is just library books I've been reading. I'll give you a quick review on some of these. So this is Thief of Thieves. It's a uh, Robert Kirkman book, which was, I don't know, this was a pretty valuable, The first this first book was valuable for a while, but probably just because of Kirkman. But it's a really good story. It's kind of an Ocean's Eleven type story, sort of cinematic feel, fun heists uh, storyline. Uh, there's like the detectives, there's the, the, the guys uh, trying to make the big heist. There's uh, the the like best thief in the world kind of thing. So really good story. Sort of a cinematic uh, feel to it. It's, kind of feels like a Brubaker story if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, I really recommend this. Really enjoyed it. Uh, then I got some Ex Machina. I've been working my way through this series. This is a really great series as well. This is Brian, uh, Brian K. Vaughn, who I love. Uh, what it is, it's uh, basically this guy here. Uh, he used to be a superhero. He got this mysterious power to control machines. And he sort of tried to be a superhero for a while. Realized it was ridiculous in, in a real world setting. It doesn't really work. He wants to make a real difference. So he runs for mayor and becomes the mayor of New York eventually. So there's a lot of politics and stuff in, in this. Uh, it's not really a superhero story. It's more about the human behind the superhero. So if you're into that, I would really recommend it. It's sort of like... Uh, if a superhero was on West Wing type thing. So if you like those kind of shows, if you like politics, uh, it's, it's some interesting debates on different things. Plus, it's just great Brian K. Vaughn story writing. So uh, I definitely recommend this one. All right, some more comics here. So I got, yeah, a big chunk of Batman comics. So it's mostly like 80s stuff, um, all sort of mid to low grade. A lot of it looks really good on the front, but on the back, they're white covers. And it looks like they were just kept sort of raw in a big stack and a lot of the ink has rubbed onto those right covers. Uh, but besides that, like, it's really nice to take a big chunk off all these. And I got uh, all these books. I think it was uh, 40, 30 or 40 books for like $40 plus shipping. Uh, so earlier Batman stuff. So I got uh, 568, 459. Oh, these are detective. Uh, 512, 585, oops, 584, 470. I like that Bronze Age looking cover. Uh, 519, and then a few Batman's as well. So I didn't have like almost any of these Batman's. Um, 
364, 345, 344, 343. I love, I'm really loving the uh, blue bat, blue and yellow Batman costume. I kind of miss it. I like to see, like to see uh, Snyder and Capullo go back to that. Batman 342, 350, nice big bold colors on that. 308, sweet Mr. Freeze story. And 298, and the one that sold it for me was uh, this right here. Uh, Batman 357, which is first appearance of Killer Croc and Jason Todd, uh, depending... There's some, it's one of those books where there's multiple first appearances, so kind of depends what you think, if it's a cameo or whatever, but this isn't it, like, it looked really good in the picture, I couldn't tell, he just had sort of all the books stacked up, but there is like a big crease along here, so it's de it's definitely not a really high grade copy, there's a couple dicks, but it's nice, like it, it presents well, and I'll probably throw it online or something, or if you want to trade for it, and uh, then I can just basically get all these other, other books for free, so... You know, there's been a lot of talk online. I've been seeing videos and stuff about investment comics and buying a bunch of stuff and how to, like, get in on the inside information and that kind of thing. And, guys, I just want to warn you, like, there's just not a lot of money to be made in comics. If you if you want to, like, score big and speculate and do that, it's just it's really hard to make money. you got to get lucky. Like, say you buy 10 copies of some number one you think is going to be good and you buy five copies of another one and six of another one well one of those will hit it'll go up 10 times the value but you've all that other money you've spent on the ones that don't hit you've lost if that makes sense so it's just it's really hard to make money on comics unless you're going to buy the hot book and flip it right away uh my advice is find the books like these that are sort of keys and you can have them and they just help pay for your collection help build it up uh, it's not bad to flip books. I'm not against flipping books. Uh, I'm just against sort of the attitude of trying to really make money or use comics as investments. If you want to make, do investments, go to your bank, buy like, there's a lot of mutual funds and things like that that'll make you your 12, 15% every month or so. And uh, you'll do way better than trying to do it on comics. It's fun to look for the keys and everything like that. But there's just don't don't get in this idea in your head like you're going to strike a witch because that's a ton of people did that in the comic in the 90s and it caused a ton of problems in comics uh, because then the market starts shifting the the guy even Marvel you see it like the shrinking variant for Ant Man was a great idea it, every issue like Ant Man was a little bit smaller a little bit bigger uh, that's a really good idea. And it got really big. And then what does Marvel do? They make like 10 more for random other characters where it doesn't make any sense and it's stupid. So you see that like something does well, gets really hyped up and then the, it affects the actual stories that come out. Gwenpool, really dumb idea, kind of a funny variant cover. I think that's fine. But now they see, oh, this book's getting hot. Oh, everyone's going crazy for it because people are buying five, 10 issues wherever they can. And it, it, fluctuate it inflates the market on something that people don't really care that much about all of a sudden they're making Gwenpool books all over the place that no one cares about 10 years down the line they're loading up the dollar bins okay so it just it throws off the market it screws up comics in general just try not to buy like that is my advice but it's your money do what you want um All right, hit up my flea market the other day, and I couldn't find much of the flea market. It was pretty dry, so when I can't find stuff, I generally, I've been buying these uh, New Avengers Bendis books because I can generally get them for a dollar or less. Uh, and it's a good run. It's fun. You get all the different variety of characters and stuff. So this is uh, New Avengers 34, 33, 34, 30, and 17. And 14. All right, so this is a novel. It's got no pictures in it or anything. It's just words. It's weird. Um, but this is uh, called The Dark Side of the Sun by Terry Pratchett. And this is his second novel. So Terry Pratchett wrote these Discworld books, which I love. They're sort of fantasy, but they're satire. They make fun of a lot of real life issues. Things like uh, money or war or whatever. Like uh, modern day issues, he sort of works them into his uh, fantasy stories. And does some really funny, interesting commentary. Really smart writer. He's friends with uh, Neil Gaiman. He wrote a couple books with him. 
uh, really witty guy. So uh, he unfortunately passed away last year. So I have a used bookstore near me and they have a big uh, first edition section. So first editions are kind of like first prints for comics. Only with uh, with books, they tend to constantly be reprint doing reprints. So there also are first prints and second prints in comics. But first edition would be like uh, like every few years, they might re-release the book. There might be a new forward by the author. They might change the cover, whatever. So this is the very first edition of this book, uh, and this is Terry Pratchett's second novel only. So. This is a really rare book, and it's an American version of that book. So there aren't a lot of these around because he's a British author who's more popular uh, in great in the UK before he sort of took off with his uh, Discworld novels. So uh, I was super excited to find this in a used bookstore. Uh, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, so I was really excited to uh, find this. It's his only his second book. And I got it on eBay now because uh, hopefully I'll use this to flip and make some money and then I can use it to buy some comics. Keep building up my collection. So uh, if you haven't seen it, I do have a trade video up right now, my previous video. Please check it out if you're interested in the trade. I just want to say if you do want some of the more key issues, it's nice if you have some other uh, key issues to offer. I don't really want to trade like a $40 book for $10, $4 books kind of thing because part of it is I like to... I want to do the trades because I want to downgrade my collection a little bit and free up some space because I'm just, I got books everywhere. So uh, if it's like whatever random stuff, like random filler issues, then yeah, totally one for one, whatever. That's great. If you want, because so, everybody wants the big key issues and no one really has anything that exciting to offer for them, just sort of miscellaneous stuff. So uh, if you want some of the more expensive issues, I'd ask that you offer up some more expensive issues uh, for those. Okay, last thing, I've been hitting up some flea markets. I work with uh, guys with autism and stuff, so we go sometimes. And there's this hilarious small town that has two flea mar two very small flea markets that are rivaling each other, I guess. One of them you have to pay and one of them you don't. So what I found is nobody likes to go into the one you have to pay because they just want to go to the free one. But I've done really well because it's so quiet there. Uh, I can find some stuff for great deals. So I haven't found many comics there. But I have found some NES games and Super NES games. I'm going to show you. This is one lot I got. Uh, these are just some of the games from it. Uh, but I got this whole lot of original Nintendo games for 50 bucks. So I got Mario and Duck Hunt, Dr. Mario. I got Dragon Warrior. I got Solar Jetman. I got Ninja Turtles. I, the, Nintendo, I got du Fester's Quest. Nintendo was my original console as a kid, so there, I have some uh, nostalgia for it. I actually prefer Super Nintendo. Captain Comic, one of these blue, like these blue ones, I guess, they aren't official, like, Nintendo products. Other companies used to make games that, like, weren't licensed by Nintendo. Um, Robocop. Time Lord, Lolo 2, and the big one here, Mega Man 1, the original Mega Man game. So that's actually my second copy of that game. And when I first bought that game, I checked the price, and it was like a $20 game or something. Nothing super exciting, but nice to have. And like when I got it the second time, I looked it up again, and this game's going for like $75 to $100. So... I was pretty stoked on that because I spent 50 Canadian for the whole lot. And so that's like 30 or 40 US dollars for everything. So uh, pretty sweet deal there. So excited. Uh, these these smaller flea markets, smaller cons. I'm so sold on that these days. Uh, it's all about going to the smaller stuff. That's where you find the best stuff. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Collect comics that you love. Don't try to make money as investments on comics because... Um, there, you're just going to get disappointed. You're going to have a lot of stuff you're not that interested in. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Bye.